our Bible to Nehemiah chapter 6 verse I think we read this uh, last week verse 17 and we'll uh, continue reading until chapter 7 verse 5 so let's read this responsibly Nehemiah 6, 70 says, Moreover, in those days, the nobles of Judah sent many letters unto Tobiah, and the letters of Tobiah came unto them. <clears throat> also, they reported his good deeds before me and uttered my words to him. And Tobiah sent letters to put me in fear. Now it came to pass when the wall was built, and I had set up the doors, and the porters, and the singers, and the Levites were appointed. That I gave my brother Hanani and Hananiah, the rule of the palace, charge over Jerusalem, for he was a faithful man and feared God above many. Now the city was large and great, but the people were few therein, and the houses were not builded. And may God put into my heart to gather together the nobles and the rulers and the people, that they might be reckoned by genealogy. And I found a register of the genealogy, of, which come at first, and found written. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for the privilege to once again uh, listen to preaching. I pray, Lord, that you uh, bless each and every one uh, this time as we study these uh, few verses, as we uh, meditate upon them and look at the principles in, uh, that are uh, written within them, dear Lord. I pray, Lord, that you uh, make this a blessed time. Help me as I speak, dear Lord, and may your name be glorified in our midst. For all these things, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So, uh, thank you. You may be seated. So, now we're... Um, Going back to the book of Nehemiah, last time I preached, I preached uh, in, in the book of Genesis as our as a kind of a halftime uh, half break dito sa book of Nehemiah because we're already halfway there. And uh, we ended up last time here uh, seeing that the walls were eventually built in just a matter of 52 days. And we learned that uh, th they only did it for 52 days compared to when Nehemiah started to uh, know about the wall, he prayed for four months. So he prayed uh, longer, okay? uh, two times longer than the, uh, than the actual building of the wall itself. And we learned that the reason, uh, one principle that we saw from that is the spiritual battle is really more important than the physical or the material battle. And if, if someone is ready spiritually, praying and asking God for guidance, the material battle will just manifest the victory. And if you're not ready spiritually, however intelligent you are or however good you are, you're going to fail in the actual battle. And Nehemiah, we saw that he was really ready spiritually because the enemy, even though it was just 52 days, but looking through what happened in those 52 days, it seemed like it was so much longer because the enemy had a lot of things to throw at them. And uh, the very last was they, they actually attacked him personally and uh, uh, tried to destroy his reputation among the people. And we can see that he's really spiritually ready because none of these things, like Paul said, moved him. None of these things uh, uh, um, made him stop working. And he kept on working and just a matter of 52 days um, it, uh, what do you call this? It, it, the wall was finished. Now, the title of the message today is It's Time to Grow. Because we know that this is just a halfway part of the book of Nehemiah. That means the wall being finished is not the end of the story. Even though the build up was uh, there, even though we think that the finishing the wall was the climax, was the victory, definitely it was a victory for the people of, uh, of Jerusalem. It was a victory for Nehemiah, but as a good leader, Nehemiah knows that one victory is not going to be the end of it. And we see here that it is just 
uh, starting for them. Uh, para bang uh, sinimulan pa lang nila build yung wall and then ngayon pa lang sila talagang lalago sa Panginoon. And, and, this, and this is the reason why I entitled this, it's, it's time to grow. Because without the walls uh, built around them, they don't have that opportunity to grow in the Lord. Why? Because we know that without walls, a lot of things can happen. But before we go to chapter 7, we still have three verses left here in chapter 6. Uh, we have 17, 18, and 19. And um, th we see here a problem that was going on throughout the 52 days of building the wall, but Nehemiah didn't, uh, didn't pansin it. Okay? Hindi, uh, hindi niya pinansin. Kasi eh, Nehemiah knew that it was not a problem that he has to deal with immediately. Okay, his immediate goal was to finish the wall. And uh, we see here in verses 17, 18, and 19 that some people were not, even though they were building the wall, they were, not real, they were also invested in something else than just the wall. And then this is something that Nehemiah knows has to be dealt with as well in the future. But uh, we see here the, uh, uh, yung, yung epekto ng problema ng mga taong ito, hindi sa wall directly. Even though may, nag sila uh, somehow a little bit ng doubt at pagod sa mga tao, pero hindi directly naapektuhan yung building ng wall. But this kind of problem that we see in verse 17, 18, and 19, directly naapektuhan sila. Sila mismo, itong mga taong ito. And, and, and in return, hindi nila na-enjoy yung blessing of the, like the rest of the people who are building. Why? Kasi dalawa yung hati yung isip nila. Building the wall and then their relationship with unbelievers. So even though they were building the wall, hindi, sila, hindi nila ganun na-enjoy. Why? Kasi hindi nila nakita talaga yung full blessing ng Panginoon doon sa mga tao na nag-focus lang sa pag-build ng wall. And that's what we're going to see here in, uh, in the rest of chapter 6. And I want to touch this. Actually, uh, this is two preachings uh, put together. Um, because and, and it's, uh, it's good that our pastor asked me to preach on a Saturday because we know Saturday is an unlimited preaching day and sometimes we finish at uh, nearly 1 o'clock but uh, let's, let's try to get, go through it uh, quickly um, so here in chapter 6 verse 17 to 19 says here that moreover in those days the nobles of Judah sent many letters to Tobiah and the letters of Tobiah came unto them remember now the, the wall here was finished and now Nehemiah is telling us this story. For there were many in Judah sworn unto him, because he was the son-in-law of Shechaniah, the son of Ara, and his son Johanna, uh, Johanan had taken the daughter of Meshulam, the son of Berechiah. So, tatlo naman kayong may lalaking anak. So, yan, pili po kayo dyan. Maraming pangalan. Also, they reported his good deeds before me, and uttered my words to him, and Tobiah sent letters to put me in fear. Now, what we see here, obviously, was these people were exchanging letters with Tobiah. And we know who Tobiah was. Tobiah is the enemy of the Lord. He doesn't want the wall to be built. And he's actually one of those people who were angered because the wall was being built. And he's one of those who were mocking the Jews. Now, uh, as I was reading this, a question popped into my mind. Didn't these uh, 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 people know what Tobiah's really, re real... Uh, real uh, purposes in the, uh, on the wall. Hindi ba nila alam na gusto niyang patigil? Hindi ba nila alam na gusto niyang patayin sila at one point? Hindi ba nila alam na uh, uh, minamak sila nito si Tobiah? But somehow, their action, exchanging letters with Tobiah, gives us the answer na somehow they don't know what's happening. Okay? Because sino ba naman tao na matino na gustong patayin ang iyong mga kapatiran at mamahalin mo pa at kakaibiganin mo pa? And although when we look at the church, and uh, later we're going to do that. Merami pa rin taong ganun sa simbahan. That there are enemies of the church and we're friends with them. Right? So ito yung nangyari sa kanila. Now, these people of Judah, hindi lang sila nag exchange ng letters to Tobiah, but they were recommending his friendship to Nehemiah. Para ba sinasabi nila kay Nehemiah, this is a good guy actually. Baka misinterpret mo lang yung pagmamak niya sa inyo or whatever. Pero he's a good guy. You, you can be friends with him. And we know that uh, towards the end of building the wall, Tobiah and, and Sanbalat actually offered their friendship to Nehemiah. But Nehemiah as a man of uh, discernment saw right through it and he knew that they were just, uh, they just wanted to kill him uh, outside of Jerusalem. That's why uh, Nehemiah saw right through that friendship. But these people somehow were blind to that. They don't know that. They, all they know was uh, Tobiah was a good man. He's, he's okay. He's a good friend. And they're recommending that to uh, uh, Nehemiah. So we'll try for a little bit to analyze what 
hindered or what blocked their discernment. The discernment that Nehemiah has, they seem to not have it. Okay, we see in these verses that, uh, uh, we see here that first thing is, Nehemiah, we've already studied this, but let's just go back to it. That Nehemiah, the reason why he knows about this is because he's a man of discernment. We don't know if the rest of the people had this kind of discernment, but all we know was they were obeying Nehemiah because they see that discernment in Nehemiah. Now here in, here in our church, in our time today, we are also given discernment. And we have studied that discernment is not only st uh, uh, strictly or, or solely given to leaders, just not just to pastors, not just to preachers, but it is available for every saved uh, person. It is available for every believer, but it does have um, the dito, uh, prerequisites. Hindi lang magic. That's not magic. Discernment is not magic. It is earned as well. You have to work to have it as well, and God will give it to you if you uh, if you do some of these things. In First John chapter two verse twenty six, it says here. To 28, these things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. So same thing. People are trying to um, seduce, uh, seduce them or confuse other believers. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you. And ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie. And even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. Kaya po hindi totoo na kung hindi ituturo ng pastor, hindi natin matututunan. Why? Because the Bible is clear. You don't need anyone to teach you because you have the teacher inside of you. You have to read it and the Holy Spirit will teach you. Although teachers are given to the church as a gift, uh, preachers are given as a gift in order to admonish us, but uh, even if we don't have that, kung tayo tayo, tayo lang, na wala tayong leader, wala nagpipreach, kaya pa rin natin matuto because of the Holy Spirit. Now, people are trying to seduce you, but... Contrary to that, in contrast, the anointing which ye have, the Holy Spirit, you don't need teachers. You're going to learn it. Verse number 28, And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence that not be ashamed before him at his coming. This is what is expected of believers. You read the New Testament, you read all the epistles, all the writers of the epistles, and, um, and you, you, you get the point that they expect believers to know what they're talking about. Hindi po sila nagi spoon feed. Of course, uh, when they started the churches, they taught them all of these things. But after that, once they leave the churches, they expect every single member to know doctrine, every single member to know truth. And that is what is expected. Hindi lang po sa mga elders, hindi lang po sa mga leaders, but to every single member. Para sa kanila, pag hindi mo alam, you're neglecting your duty. And it's, that, it's not just the duty of the preachers. And here in these verses, we see that if you want to have this, un, uh, this discernment, if you want the Holy Spirit to teach you every step of the way, you must abide in Him. You must abide in the Lord. Hindi po, there is no discernment apart from a good relationship with the Lord. If we don't have a good relationship with the Lord, if we're not obeying Him, if we're not obeying what, is, what the Bible is saying, don't expect for you to have discernment. All you will have is pakiramdam. Gut feeling. That's all you're gonna have. But it's not the Holy Spirit, and you can never trust what you what uh, trust it. Po dapat, we, we need to abide. And how can you abide? How can we obey if we're not studying? Philippians chapter one, verse nine to ten says here. And this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in what knowledge and in all judgment that ye may approve. Now he's talking to the whole church. Hindi lang po sa pastor. Ye may approve. Things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. That's why it's expected of every member to be able to approve whether something is right or wrong. To be able to know whether something is the will of God or not. Hindi lang po tayo tanong ng tanong lang. Na kung hindi sin, ah, alam naman ni pastor kung sino dapat ang uh, mapangasawa ko. Alam naman ni pastor kung ano dapat ang gawin namin sa church. Yes, it may be true, but kung ganun lang ating magiging attitude, then... Uh, uh, para bang mas madaling sirain ng jablo ang simbahan dahil pastor lang ang kailangan niya sirain. Why? But if every member is armed with the truth, knowledgeable in the word of God, and has discernment, kahit na ang pastor sometimes maligaw or sometimes magkamil, of course magkakamila dahil tao lang, the members are there to lift him up and help him. Kaya nga po hindi ganun, as a church, I praise God, hindi ganun yung ugali natin dito. Hindi lang tayo tanong lang ng tanong kay pastor, kung ano na sinabi ni pastor, yun na lang. But if it is clear na nagkamali, sino nag, kahit sino man nag-preach dito, we can say that it is not according to the word of God. Why? Because we know the word of God. Kaya nga dito, you, you abound yet more and more in what? 
in knowledge and in all judgment. That's why apart from great knowledge as well from the Word of God, there can be no discernment. Kung hindi po tayo nagbabasa ng Bible, hindi na tayo nagme-meditate sa Bible, we're not studying the Bible, we're not digging deep into the Bible, wag na wag po kayong mag-expect na magkakaroon ka ng discernment. And, and, and don't even expect to make the right decisions every time. Why? Kasi yun yung clear command ng, ng Panginoon to read the Bible, study the Bible, and the answers to the problems that you have is in the Bible. Kaya nga, may Holy Spirit ka, hindi ka naman i-remind ng Holy Spirit something na hindi mo binasa, something na hindi mo pinag-aralan. Hindi naman yan magic na ah, uh, uh, in trouble itong uh, uh, anak ko. Sige, kahit na hindi, hindi pa nag-aaral yan, bigyan mo ng discernment, sabihin mo sa kanya gagawin niya. Hindi. And sometimes God will let us suffer the consequences of our wrong decisions. Why? So, f- so that we will realize kung ano yung nakukulang sa ating buhay. So we have to obey, we have to study the Word of God in order for us to have this kind of discernment. Okay, there's no shortcut. Hindi po yan, uh, naligtas ka na, may Holy Spirit ka na, puro, uh, naalala ko na naman si, ano eh, yung na yung tumira dito dati na matandang babae. Pag gusto sa soul winning kami, saan po tayo sa soul winning ngayon? Sige lang, drive ka lang. Sasabihin naman ng Holy Spirit ko sa tayo titigil. Hindi po ganun yun. Okay? Uh, hindi po magic. Okay? Ito po ay something na alam mo, binasa mo, at ina-apply mo sa buhay mo. That is simply it. And, 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 and sometimes when it's time to discern uh, from what's right and what's almost right, then that's when the Holy Spirit will work and help you figure it out. Now, without godly wisdom, all we have, all we're going to do is make wrong choices. Yan po yung yung ating uh, yung tinuro sa atin ni Pastor Bugtong, remember? Uh, na pagka hindi tama ang doctrine mo, it will lead you to wrong decisions in life. Kaya dapat po alam natin. Now, going back to Nehemiah, these people didn't have this discernment. And what is what was hindering them from having this kind of discernment that their leader has? In verse 18, we see here that they have a relationship with the lost. It says here, For there were many in Judah sworn unto him, to Tobiah, because he was the son-in-law of Shechaniah, the son of Ara, and his son Johanan had taken the daughter of Meshulam, the son of Berechiah. So that means, sila po ay unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Kaya po ang judgment nila clouded. Kaya yung discernment nila nakaharang. Kaya may bias sila dun sa unbeliever. Even though they're really working, meron pala silang bias. So remember the problem that they caused? Sila yung unang nagreklamo na pagod na kami. And even though this is the tribe of Judah, the people, the, the tribe that people look up to, the tribe that is supposed to be leading all of these things, but they were the tribe who said, we're tired. Pagod na kami, wala na kami makain. Sila pa yung unang nagreklamo. And, and, and even though it's sila yung mga leaders during that time, but the reason why this happened was because they had a relationship with unbelievers. Okay, it says uh, they were related to, the, uh, to Tobiah. Okay, there was marriage involved in this uh, relationship. They, uh, what do you call this? Tobiah's son was married to the daughter of Meshulam who was, who was working on one part of the wall. So, isabi uh, remember that uh, Nehemiah placed leaders on each part of the wall. Now, yung isang, uh, isang daughter na nung isang sa mga leaders na yon, ay asawa niya yung anak ni Tobiah. So that means unequal yoke. And even though it seems uh, 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 harmless sometimes na magkaroon tayo ng relationship with unbelievers, the Satan will exploit anything he can use para lang masira ang gawain o masira ka personally. Kaya nga po, kailangan tayo maingat. Kaya nga po, hindi, that's the reason why something that we don't understand. People who keep on insisting about uh, having relationships with unbelievers is simply saying, I know more than the Bible. I know more than the Lord. I know better for me than, for, than, than, than what the Lord is telling me. Kasi maliwanag po ang Bible na hindi tayo dapat makipamatok sa unbelievers. But still, we do it. Why? Kasi tingin natin, hindi alam ng Bible yung sinasabi niya. Hindi niya ako naiintindihan. Hindi niya naiintindihan kung ano yung naramdaman ko. Hindi niya naiintindihan na napakabait ng taong to. It doesn't matter kung mabait o hindi. What matters is he's the son of the devil. And, and being the son of the devil, he's still under the influence of the flesh. Diba ang ganda nung verse na binasa kanina? And Paul in his words in uh, chapter 7, he makes us realize and understand how helpless we are apart from the Holy Spirit. Kaya nga itong mga tao, they're unbelievers, they don't have the Holy Spirit, they are helpless. Sabi ni Paul, wretched. Helpless, wala. Gusto ko mang gumawa ng tama, sabi ni Paul in the flesh, kasalanan pa rin ang nagagawa ko. 
Ganun po sila. And then, we insist on having relationship with these people. However kind they are, they are in the flesh. All they're going to end up is doing sin. Kahit na po gaano sila kabuti. That's why the Lord said, in His wisdom, and I believe He's more wise than you, in His wisdom, do not be unequally yoked together with these people. And because of this, uh, the tribe of Judah, people who, who were supposed to be leaders and strong people, they got tired. They don't want. Why? Ang hirap naman to live two lives. Church, mundo. Church, mundo. Church, mundo. Hindi ka ba mapapagod nun? Di ba? Pagkita mo sa church, 2 Corinthians 6, na naman ang preaching, nasaktan ka. Pagbuta mo sa mundo, mapapagod ka kasi hindi naman talaga yun ang gusto ng Holy Spirit. So you cannot live those two lives. It's either you're all in for God or you're not at all. Now, the, now what God is asking for us is total commitment. To, to, to give our dedication to the Lord and that's it. Kaya nga po minsan, alam na natin kaaway ng simbahan, kaibigan natin. Eh, brad, sabi, love your enemies eh. Hindi po ganun ang ibig sabihin nun. Ano po, love your enemies means na you're not going to do anything bad to them even if they're doing bad things to you. You're not gonna recompense that uh, to them. But uh, we're taking that into the next level that we're actually loving the enemies. Okay, we're actually in a relationship with them. And again, Ulit-ulit po itong mensahe na ito sa simbahan na ito. And, the re- and, 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 and this is something that I have seen in every churches I've been to. Itong, itong message na ito, palaging, it always comes up. Simply because believers seem to not learn the lesson until it's too late. Okay? Until it's too late. Kaya nga po, uh, lagi ito na yung ulit. And then, again, I will repeat, it's not just about being married with them, boyfriend or girlfriend. And even if you are confiding with these people that is in a relation being in a relationship with them kaya nga po, we have to know that and we have to uh, discern this kind of things now uh, let's just read a few of these verses again 2 Corinthians 6 14 to 18 and I know that reading the Bible is just mo- mo- the most effective be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness and what communion hath light with darkness and what conquered at Christ with Belial or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel and what agreement had the temple of God with idols for ye are the temple of the living God as God has said I will dwell in them and walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people and verse 17, Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. The Bible is clear. And, it's, uh, and uh, we will not dig deep into this, but makita natin through all these verses the contrast of what the church should be, believers should be, and what unbelievers are. Kaya nga po minsan, ang, ang napakahirap po sa isang Kristiyano ay magkaroon ng anak, kapatid, asawa, na unbeliever. Kasi hindi mo naman basta pwede iwanan na yan. Pamilya mo yan. That's why yun yung struggle. And we have one, uh, one deacon in Singapore who has that, uh, uh, an unbelieving wife, na asawa na niya bago pa siya masave. And we can see that there's a struggle. And even though how, kahit na gaano mo pa gustong ibigay ang lahat sa simbahan, meron kang responsibilidad sa asawa mo na ayaw maniwala sa, sa, sa salita ng Panginoon. Kaya nga po bilang mga Kristiyano na, na single ka pa, don't make that mistake. Huwag mo nang gawin yan. Kahit na tumatanda ka na, kahit na sa tingin mong Ah, uh, mabait naman, pwede namang maligtas. You know, uh, anong tawag diyan sa ano yung modern term diyan? Uh, 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 evangelistic dating ba ang tawag diyan? something like that. Na dine-date mo para ma-save. Something like yung ginagawa ng mga kabataan ngayon. It never works. And maybe uh, maybe it worked for some people, but it's not the rule. Those are exceptions and it's just God's grace and mercy upon their lives. Po, that's why we have to uh, separate ourselves from that. Why? Because in verse number 18 it says, And I will be a father unto you and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord. Ano yung command ng Panginoon sa verse 17? To come out from among them, to separate from them, and then I will be a father unto you. I'm not saying na pag may kaibigan ka, hindi mo na uh, 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 ama ang ating Panginoon, but it simply means that our relationship with God is affected kung meron tayong mga relasyon sa unbelievers. Okay? And we cannot enjoy the full fellowship with the Lord when, once we have that. Here in 1 Corinthians 15, 33, it says, Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Wala pong exception yan. Kahit na ano pang, gaano pa kataas ang tingin natin sa sarili natin, kahit gaano pa tayo knowledgeable sa Word of God, as long as you spend time with evil people, and I'm saying unbelievers, it will corrupt your, 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 the way you live and the way you live for the Lord. Uh, Proverbs 13.20 He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, 
but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Ano yung sinasabi ng Panginoon? Ano yung mga fools na ito? These people are those who don't believe that there's a God. And somehow, and even though, I don't know if you agree with me, ang mga tao po na hindi ligtas, somehow, they don't really believe that there's a God. They acknowledge that there's a higher being, but they don't believe in the God that we're preaching. They don't believe in that. Their God is their themselves, their ambition, the, what they want, to, their goals in life. Yun po yung kanilang Diyos, because that's, that's what they live for. Pero po ang, ang, ang tunay sa kanilang uh, 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 puso, sa kanilang uh, damdamin, hindi po talaga sila naniniwalang may Diyos. Why? Because if they believe the God that we're preaching, they're going to come to Him to re- with, with repentance and faith. Kaya nga po, they're fools, the Bible says. They're these people. And if, even if you're a spiritual person, you keep hanging out with fools, you're going to be destroyed. Huwag po nating i-underestimate ang power po ng ating, ng ating kaaway. Hindi po nating kakayanin. Uh, ang, ang kanyang mga ibabato sa atin. Now, they don't only have a relationship with unbelievers, but somehow they have partnership with them as well. Now, during this time sa Old Testament, ang, uh, when you have a business deal with someone, sometimes yung kanilang kontrata is marrying your daughter with their son. Parang yung, yung kontrata. So para bang deal tayo, sige, yung anak mo, pakasalan yung anak ko. Sabihin, deal na yan. Kaya nga, it may be the case with these people. Kaya nga, maybe the reason why they're married to each other because they have a deal. And we know that after, uh, in the future, in the uh, uh, later chapters here in Nehemiah, na Tobiah was somehow one of those people who are who is uh, in charge of trading. Na dumadaan din sa Jerusalem. Kaya nga, these people may have a business deal with them. Kaya nga po, hindi lang tayo basta dapat mag, hindi magkaroon ng relationship with unbelievers. But do not partner with them as much as possible. Bakit po? Kasi... Simple, same principle po sa relationship. The devil can use that partnership to destroy you. Evil partnerships will destroy you as well. Hindi lang po yan basta sa unbelievers. Hindi lang po yan basta, basta sa mga business. Uh, when we're not just talking about business. We're even talking about friendship as well with people. Even ministry partnership with other people. Uh, if you're partners with someone who has corrupt doctrine, somehow yung doctrine mo makukorrupt din. Kaya nga po, maliwanag sa atin, we have to be always draw the line in uh, fellowship with other churches as well. Hindi lang po basta, no, it's okay to be friends with them. Hindi naman po sinasabi na bawal silang kaibiganin, but it's not to the point na uh, uh, yung, yung relationship natin will affect our doctrine in the way, in, in the way that we are teaching. Kaya nga po, these people, they don't, only, they don't only have the relationship with them, but they have also partnership with them. Kaya po, ingat tayo. Kaya po, I, for me, personally, I, I don't subscribe to people anymore na uh, they openly misrepresent my God. Imagine sa mga may asawa, if people are uh, 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 gossiping about your wife and saying false things about your wife, hindi ka ba susugod o aayusin man lang o kukumprontahin man lang yung nagsasalita? But you know, that is what's happening in our Christian world today. Marami pong pastor na sikat, mat- matataas, kilala, they're posting wrong doctrines. And that's exactly what they're doing. They're misrepresenting our God. But for us, we take it sitting down. Okay lang. Pero kung asawa mo ang siraan, galit ka agad. Diyos mo ang misrepresent, okay lang yan. Kaibigan yan, intindihin na lang. Di po ba? Ay, that means yung loyalty mo talaga, wala sa katotohanan. When, I don't really understand it. Napag-aralan natin na one thing, isa sa pinaka madaling tindigan ay yung katotohanan. Kasi simply because it's the truth. But these people are not standing for the truth at hindi natin kaya to stand against them. Why? Because we are more loyal to friendship and all of these things than the truth. Now, this is just, uh, I just want to finish 17, 18, and 19. Now, these people do not have discernment. They're clouded because of their relationship with unbelievers. Now, let's go to the uh, uh, verse, uh, chapter 7. Now, for six chapter, we've been looking at the process of rebuilding this wall. And we thought, again, that this is the climax. Na ito na yon. But the wall this time, starting chapter 7, nung nagawa na, it now has to start working for the people. It now has to start to serve its purpose. Now, itong wall, we don't have this kind of walls today. Okay, even though some... Uh, uh, people are still constructing that sa kanila mga bansa. But today, hindi na po ganito mga cities. Cities are not walled anymore. But now, if we're going to apply walls in our lives, we can say that ito yung mga uh, what do you call this? Uh, hindi literal na walls, but they are, ano ba sa English? Figurative. Uh, figurative na lang yung, yung mga walls na ito. And the Bible says in Proverbs 25, 28, 
He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. Now, the wall has to be finished. And now, before we go to the, uh, some points here about growing inside the walls, let's look at the importance of walls during this time. And even in the Bible, the book of Proverbs says here that he that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. That means, spiritually, kung wala kang mga walls sa iyong buhay, or just corporately as a church, or together as a church, kung wala tayo na mga walls ito sa buhay natin, we're not going to be sober. We're not going to be people who have control over our decisions or the things that we want. Kasi pag walang walls, the Bible is clear. Kung ano makita mo, yun ang gagawin mo. Kung ano yung masaya, kung ano yung maganda sa paningin, yun ang gagawin mo. Yun yung desire mo. You follow your flesh without these walls. And we're going to be talking about these walls. Now, there are at least 12 Hebrew words translated as wall in the Old Testament alone. Okay? Uh, and, and there are three prevalent uh, uh, translations here. The first here is Chauma. Okay? Chauma, C-H-O-W-M-A-H. It appeared 133 times in the King James Bible and it is generally used to refer to defensive walls of a city. It shows protection from danger. And uh, metaphorically, it has the idea of protection. Kaya pag sinabit ng Bible na wall, which is uh, yung word na chauma, it is talking about protection. The, the Bible says in Proverbs 18.11, The rich man's wealth is his strong city and as an high wall in his own conceit. Parang yung, yung, yung wall na to, as a protection, para bang yung mayayaman, para sa kanila, they trust in their riches. Ito yung security nila. This is their wall. Okay? And, and, and th that, that is protection. Another example is when David, uh, remember when he sent his servants to Nabal to request uh, for something, but the wife of, of that person refused them. Sabi dito sa 1 Samuel 25, 15 to 16, but, then men, uh, but the men were very good unto us, and we were not hurt. Neither missed we anything as long as we were uh, conversant with them when we were in the fields. And they were a wall unto us, both by night and day, all the while we were with them keeping the sheep. So pag sinasabi itong wall na to, which is chauma, it has the idea of protection. And it's the same in our lives. The reason why we have walls, and later we're going to look at what walls we should have in our lives, is for us to be protected of the enemy, of the pleasures of this world and everything. The next word is kir, Q-I-Y-R. And I don't know how to pronounce it. it. It occurred 66 times. And it just refers to the literal walls of a building. The, last, the next one is gadar, G-A-D-A-R. Meaning to wall up. Now this is a verb. Na para bang uh, bakuran mo. Pag sinabing to wall, para bang uh, bakuran mo siya, to close up something. Uh, usually sinasabi ito when, when, when there's, where there are sheep and then kailangan silang bakuran para hindi silang maligaw. And, this, and, and also the vineyards of other people in the Old Testament. Now, these walls have many use now in the Old Testament. Some of them, of course, obviously to offer protection from the enemies or to separate parts of a building okay, from, for different uses or just to set boundaries. Now, spiritually, these this walls talk to us as well. We need walls to protect us from the enemy. We need walls to separate ourselves from people who do not want to obey the will of God. And we need walls to set boundaries to what we can and we cannot do in our lives. Now here in Nehemiah, instead, the wall here has a, a feeling of completeness. Para bang 52 days they were working. And all the hard work ended when they see the wall finished. Now they, they feel that they're safe. They're, 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 they're safe from, from all of these negative things outside the, uh, outside the wall. But we can see here that it's just the beginning. Why? Because right after the finishing of the wall, Nehemiah started setting up the city. Okay, alam na niya, now the walls are finished, now we have to get down to business. Para bang introduction lang to. Simula lang to, now we have to get down to business. Because looking at their lives, they have been in captivity for hundreds of years. It's not just the wall that's the problem. The problem is they have been they have gone so far from the Lord. Kaya nga sabi ni, wall, ni, 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 wall, ni Nehemiah, we have to build this wall and then we start to repair that relationship and again grow towards the Lord. That's the reason why they have this wall. And sometimes yun po yung problema sa atin. When we have this feeling of victory and, and kahit na yung victory natin, however small it is, we stop, we adore it, and we celebrate. And that's when usually, that's when we fall. Now, Nehemiah knows about this. There is no celebration here at all. In chapter 7, he went right down to business. Now, even though walls have this uh, positive uh, meaning in the Bible, pero sa panahon natin, walls can also have a negative connotation. 
You know, it, inside the church, we have walls. Now, literal walls or figurative walls, walls that keep us from false doctrine and people who are protecting us like pastors and preachers and each other. Pero po, within this organization as a church, meron din po mga tao na gumagawa ng sarili nilang mga walls. Para bang sinasarado nila sarili nila. Not only them, but maybe some people around them as well. Now, this is something that is negative. Why? Dahil sa isang, lo- sa isang simbahan, what is expected of us is to be close to each other. Relationship, kaya nga brethren eh, magkakapatid. Now, sometimes inside this church, meron pa mga tao na they're boxing themselves up. Ayaw nila yung fellowship. Ayaw nila yung closeness. Ayaw nila yung openness sa simbahan. That's why they build walls around themselves. They build walls around their few friends. Walang makakalapit sa amin, walang makakaklose sa amin, hindi kami mag open up, kami-kami lang. Meron na po tayong walls, kapatid. We don't need walls inside this church as well. Kaya nga po, uh, we were studying this in Matthew chapter 7, and, and uh, Matthew chapter 5 to 7, sa aming klase sa mga uh, 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 single ladies class. And we see how Christ spent a lot of His preaching or Sermon on the Mount correcting what the, Pharise- what the false doctrine the Pharisees are teaching, uh, uh, um, what they call this, this uh, the people during that time. And one, one result of all this false doctrine ay yung relationship ng mga tao that time is not what God wants it to be. Now, when God set up Israel and called Israel's uh, nation, their relationship is very close. Uh, kaya nga po kahit na masaktan ko lang yung kapitbahay ko, kailangan i-report yan sa lahat. Para lahat sila i-judge kung anong dapat na parusa sa akin at siguraduhin fair yung parusa sa akin. Kasi kung hindi natin sasabihin sa lahat, pwedeng personally, bawian, ko na, bawian na lang niya ako, bawian ako ng kamag-anak niya, kung sobra yung pagbawi nila, babawi na naman ako. And it affects the relationship of the whole thing. Kaya nga po nangyayari, once there's an offense, they report it to everyone, they have a meeting, sabihin, ito yung fair na parusa sa'yo, ito yung fair na dapat mong gawin sa kanya, kabayaran ng kasalanan mo, and all is well. Baro po sa panahon natin ngayon, wala na pong ganyang klaseng simbahan, ganyang kaklose na simbahan. When that is what God is expected, expecting of us. That's the reason why there are walls. First is to repair the relationship that was broken inside. That's why, para may walls na, meron na protection, wala na maghihinder sa atin para ayusin yung relasyon natin sa isa't isa. Okay, hindi na natin kailangan, uh, uh, tawag dito, uh, alalahanin pa. Ang, 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 ang mga kaaway na parating. Now, these are walls. Now, what are the walls in our lives? Again, as I have said, the reason why the walls are here, are, are set up here in Nehemiah, was for people to again start growing in the Lord. Okay? So that they again start uh, uh, getting close to the Lord. Now, first wall that we see here, or apply in our life, is the Word of God. Now, we are in chapter 7. In chapter 8, we're going to study... Now, after all this prayer of Nehemiah in chapters 1 to 6 and 7, in chapter 8, binigay na niya ang leadership of spiritual leadership kay Ezra. Now, uh, am I correct? Yes, kay Ezra. Now, what Ezra started doing, hindi niya na neglect yung prayer, but what he started to do was preach and preach and preach the Word of God. Kaya nga po, na once the walls were started to build, what they did was to get deep again, to know again the Lord, and to, 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 build, up, uh, to build up the relationship with the Lord. So first thing sa atin po, wall, one wall that we can apply in our lives is the Word of God. And the Word of God is something that is protecting us from all of these outside uh, attacks that can, that, that, that can happen to us. And apart from reading and meditating upon the Word of God, we will never grow in the Lord. 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17, it says, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Ano daw po yung reason? That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So if we expect to grow, and if we have in our church set up walls that are here to protect us, we have to use the Word of God as a means of growing in the Lord. Hindi po tayo mag-grow sa Panginoon ng kaka-pray lang. I'm not saying that prayer is not important. But prayer is giving to God what is in our hearts and all these things. But the Word of God is what is, uh, is God talking to us. God letting us know sometimes the answer to our prayers. And without reading the Word of God, hindi po kompleto yung communication. 
That's why you pray, you ask God for wisdom, and then you read the Word of God. Then it completes the communication. Now you ask God for wisdom, now God gives you wisdom through the Word of God. You ask God for strength, now God gives you strength through the Word of God. Whatever you ask God for, the answer is going to be in the Word of God. And God is going to lead you to the right verses, to the right passages, to the right principles in order for you to learn and in order for you to grow. That's why apart from the Word of God, hindi po tayo lalago sa Panginoon. And sometimes, ang, ang, ang problema po natin is we think, the Bible says the Bible, uh, that the Word of God is prof- profitable. But the way we live our lives is we, para ba sinasabi natin, hindi naman talaga ganun ka-profitable ang Word of God. Makinig na lang ako sa preaching sa YouTube. Mas profitable sa akin. Hintayin ko na lang yung lesson namin sa Sunday. Mas profitable yun sa akin. But the Bible says, what is profitable is a person sitting down, reading, and meditating upon the Word of God. That's what's profitable. And yung maki- mapapakinggan natin sa Sunday is just reinforcing what you have read. Mapapakinggan natin sa Sunday school is just reinforcing what you have studied. Or maybe, kokorek ka ng konti. But, what is profitable is you, personal study of the Word of God. Kaya nga po, until and unless you settle that in your life, na ang final authority ko sa buhay ko ay ang salita ng Panginoon, hindi ka lalago sa Panginoon. Now, even though we're Christians at saved na tayo, nasa tama na tayong simbahan, minsan hindi pa po natin final authority ang Word of God. Minsan para rin tayo yung mga Katoliko, final authority nila yung pare. Pero sa atin, ang final authority natin is people we idolize in the church. It can be the pastor. It can be someone we see as ultra-spiritual. It can be someone that we see is knowledgeable in the Word of God. Pero hindi po natin, we don't take the Word of God for what it says. We have to get the approval or the uh, dito, affirmation from someone else. Di ba? Pagka po ganun ang ugali natin sa Christian, hindi po tayo lalago. Para ba sinasabi natin, hindi ko kayang intindihin ang Word of God. Kailangan ko tanungin si pastor. Kailangan ko tanungin si sister. Kailangan ko tanungin si brother. Nang hindi nila sasabihin sa akin, hindi ko tumatututunan. Now, you are underestimating and insulting the Holy Spirit in your life. Kaya nga po, study for yourself. You have that ability. We all have the same ability to study the Word of God. And until and unless we say that, Lord, this is the final authority in my life, whatever it says, even if I don't like it, I'm going to obey it. That's when you start growing. And, and uh, since I got married, then there are a lot of things in the Word of God that was confirmed to me. Dati ko naman nabasa, but I didn't like personally. But what I had to do is to submit to the Word of God. Kaya nga po, kung ikaw, ganyan din, meron ka nikita sa Bible na hindi agree sa sarili mong uh, prinsipyo sa buhay, kapatid, hindi ka mas magaling sa salita ng Panginoon. Hindi ka mas magaling sa Word of God. This is God's provision for us to protect us from, all, from, from destroying our lives. Not only the Word of God, but we have studied already this and we're not going to go through that, is prayer. One wall in our life is prayer. We have to pray. And this is Nehemiah's tool, his main tool throughout rebuilding the wall. Not only the Word of God and prayer, but also fellowship with believers. Hindi po tayo lalagay ng Panginoon sa simbahan kung hindi natin kailangan ng isa't isa. And we have to believe that, that we need each other. We need each other to protect us. We're not, none, of, none of us here are all-knowing. None of us here uh, knows the Bible from cover to cover. All of us need each other, hindi naman to complete us, but to complete the walls that should be around us. Para po tayo maprotektahan. We're studying the Bible, we're praying, but we're also relying on each other. Kaya nga po, we have to have that ability to trust each other, to help each other, and to know when someone needs something. Fellowship with believers. Kaya nga po, wag kang maggagawa ng walls sa iyo lang. Na lalayo tayo sa simbahan. Minsan po, ang problema ng tao, nagkaroon ng problema, nagkamali, ang default reaction is, lalayo muna ako sa simbahan. And that's the, I don't know, that is the most, uh, that's the dumbest thing you can do. Ha? Nagkamali ka na, lalayo ka pa sa simbahan when it's the church who can actually correct your ways. Kaya nga po, we appreciate people who, who, uh, who are, uh, tawag dito, uh, humble under discipline. Kasi alam nila na kinokorek sila, tinatama ang kanilang buhay. And they will humbly take it and then be better for the Lord. Pero yung mga tao na nagkamali na, sila pang mayabang, sila pang lalayo, where, ano mangyayari po sa buhay nila? Lalayo pa sila sa mga tao na pwedeng gamitin ng Panginoon to correct them and to give, give them wisdom and to expound the Word of God sa kanila. Now, one wall that we can, we can use is, the, is other believers. Kaya nga po, pag may fellowship, let's take every opportunity to be there. Uh, kaya nga po, pag may pananambahan, take every opportunity to be there. And it is our duty to be there. Wag, wag po tayong uh, uh, absent-absent. 
Kahit na po, kainan lang yan, fellowship lang yan, kasi birthday ni Anolis, be there. Why? Because we're going to be with believers. Minsan, excited pa tayo na may kasama tayong unbelievers kaysa sa mga kapatiran. And minsan nga po, pag may problema ka, una mo pang pagsasabihan, unbelievers kaysa sa believers. Anong wisdom na bibigay nila sa'yo? Ah, inom tayo. Diba? Uh, layo tayo, pasyal tayo. Yun lang naman ang alam nila. They know nothing of the Word of God. Pero kung open po natin yan sa mga tao, sa simbahan, then they, God will use them to, to show us our problem in the Word of God. Kaya nga po may mga preachers, may mga preachers' wives, may mga pastor, ito yung mga tao na pwede natin pagsabihan ng problema, meron tayong iniisip na decision. These are people that God can use to help us direct our lives. Huwag po natin layuan. Huwag po tayong magpapas sa mga fellowship. Ano po? Yung mga pas na yan, hindi po maganda. Ay, sabi ko sa inyo, ang pangit niyan. Okay, so, not only those three things, but another one is worship. Ay, another wall that we can put in our lives is worship. And this is very important kasi uh, we're going to the verses later. May kita natin how important worship is to Nehemiah. Let's go to uh, Nehemiah 7 verse 1. And uh, we'll finish up by just going through these verses. Now it came to pass when the walls was built and I had set, I had set up the doors, and the porters and the singers and the Levites were apport, appointed. Now, the porters are the ones who are tasked to open and close the gate. Okay? Because if the walls are there, at bukas din naman ang gate, ay uh, para bang wala rin namang use. Diba? So they are there, they're always there at the gate, opening and closing it. Okay? These are the guards. Now, spiritually, these are people who are guarding the church from wrong doctrine. Okay, ito yung mga tao na, oh, mali ito. And then tell, they tell the church, don't believe that. Don't subscribe to this teaching. Don't do this or that. And now, this signifies that Nehemiah, for his first priority was to guard the work that they have done. Hindi sila, when the wall were finished, they didn't sit around and admire their work. No, Nehemiah immediately started to appoint people to protect what they have done. Okay, to protect the, uh, uh, that. And, and what, what else? Hindi lang like porters, but there were also singers and Levites. Okay? The singers are there to assist the priest for temple worship. So the first things that Nehemiah uh, settled was people who were guarding and people who will lead worship. Why? Because this is what will ultimately slowly repair the relationship with the Lord. This worship, the Levites who are working in the temple. And one thing here uh, that I immediately saw, the Levites and the singers, they were uh, uh, not created by God. They were chosen by God to do temple things. All of this, temple, temple, temple. But we see while they were rebuilding the walls, these Levites and these singers, all of them were also getting their hands dirty, building the wall. Kaya nga po, makita natin dito, when, when Nehemiah started setting up all the responsibilities, which are what they were, were really supposed to do, but previously, in those 52 days, wala pong exempted sa trabaho. Yung singers, to mga porters, itong mga Levites, were supposed to be priests working in the temple. All of them got down and dirty and, and, and uh, 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 building the wall. Kaya nga po, we compare it to our time, and I think I've made this point already before, na wala pong exempted sa work sa simbahan. Kahit na pastor ka, kahit na ano pa yung calling mo, ano pang binigay sa'yo ng ministry ng Panginoon, lahat po tayo dapat nagtatrabaho sa simbahan. Now, of course, it's good na pagka sa ating kumain, hindi yung pastor natin na maguhugas ng kaldero. Uh, nakaka, hindi na naman magandang tignan yun. But, it doesn't mean na hindi siya magiging willing to do that when it's called to do that. Makita po natin sa panahon ngayon na pag pastor ka na ng malaking simbahan, hindi ka na pwedeng humawak ng walis. Hindi ka pwedeng humawak ng map. Hindi ka na pwedeng mag-soul winning ng tanghali. Ang sinosoul winning mo na dapat mga doktor na, uh, architect, kasi hindi nila papakinggan ng worker, si pastor na papakinggan nila. Di po ba? That is sad because people here, whatever their job originally was, or, or, or uh, kung ano man yung talagang ginagawa nila before, they stopped it and they got their hands dirty building the wall. Kaya nga po walang exempted sa, uh, sa, hindi sa gawain ng Panginoon. Now, that's what we realize here. Now, Nehemiah immediately set up these people. In verse 2, it says here, that I gave my brother, Hanani and Hananiah, the ruler of the palace, charge over Jerusalem, for he was a faithful man and feared God above many. Nehemiah was really down to business. No breaks, no rest, trabaho lang. Tapos na yung wall, let's do this. Kaya nga po mga kapatid, when you have a spiritual victory, wag ka mag-relax. Kaya nga po sa Pilipinas, you notice after youth camps, youth conference, after a few weeks, a few months, dun yung mga greatest downfall spiritually na mga kabataan. Why? Because they relax. Di ba? Three days ka sa camp, three days ka sa conference, you think you have known everything you should know, okay na, alam ko na lahat, dami ko ng notes, kaya ko na to. 
Pero then they relax. And then that's when the devil hit them. And then they fall spiritually. Kaya nga po, kahit nagaano pa kalaki ang victory mo, don't relax. Keep on working for the Lord. Until and unless nakunin ka ng Panginoon, keep on working. That's another way to protect us from falling. Now it says here that I gave my brother Hanani, Hananiah, the ruler of the palace, charge over Jerusalem, for we, he was a faithful man and feared God. Now we remember these people as those people who reported to uh, in, in chapter 1, they reported to Nehemiah what happened. Okay, these are the people who are also concerned about what was happening. Now, these two men were given uh, the charge over Jerusalem. And now, this says a lot about Nehemiah. Nehemiah was the one who led the rebuilding of the wall. He could have easily also taken charge of the city. Diba? Ako naman ang dahilan kung bakit nabuild ang wall na to, akong leader. Diba ba? Sa panahon natin ngayon, ganun naman gagawin nila. But Nehemiah simply appointed people in charge of Jerusalem. Not me. Why? Because maybe, uh, remember in chapter 2, he promised that he will return after. Yes, sabi sa chapter 2, verse 6, it says, And the king said unto me, the queen also sitting by him, For how long shall this journey be? And, and when wilt thou return? So it pleased the king to send me, and I set him a time. Binigyan niya ng timetable yung king. And even though hindi clear dito kung ano yung timetable na binigyan niya, but we know that the promise is he will go back to the palace. Now, we know that when he goes back, he's going to be a cupbearer again. Now, compare being a governor or, or a leader of a whole city to going back and being a cupbearer. For Nehemiah, he doesn't mind. He knows his calling is clear. I have to lead the people to build the walls. God didn't call me to take over the city. And if somehow God will call me to do that, I'll do it. But now, it's not my job. So I set my brothers, give them charge over the city. Hindi po siya takot na i-delegate yung authority. Uh, that's why people, uh, we should admire leaders who are like that, who are not afraid to share their authority with other people. Because it's never the will of God to put authority of, to one person among uh, the whole church. Hindi po yan ang will of God. You read throughout the, uh, the New Testament, palagi, palagi pong plurality of elders. Hindi lang po isang pastor. Palaging maraming pastor, maraming men that are in charge of, 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 uh, of the church. Hindi lang po lagi isa. Kasi pag isa lang, edi isa lang ang kukorap ng jablo tapos. Na kung si Nehemiah ay corrupt na leader, and if he loves, uh, and, and if he really loves uh, power and all these things, hindi niya po gagawin ito. But he gave these people charge over, over Jerusalem. Now, we see here that the character of these leaders, here in verse number, going back to chapter 7, verse number 2, for he was a faithful man and feared God above many. For Nehemiah, this is the only qualification he needed. People who are faithful and who fear God above many. Okay, we can translate this as above everything. They fear God above anything. They are faithful and they fear God. Now, these are the kind of leaders that we have to look for today. People who are faithful and people who fear God. Kaya nga po, even sa pag-support natin ng missionaries, all we require is faithfulness. Not necessarily results, not necessarily numbers or, or uh, a large uh, amount of baptism, but what we require is are they faithfully doing what they do for the Lord? Kaya nga po, pagka ganito ang klaseng leader, growth is really possible sa simbahan. Kung ang leader po natin ay faithful and fear the Lord, lalo po lalago ang mga members. But if our leader are selfish, our leaders are selfish, they will hinder the growth of the church. The reason why Nehemiah placed these people was he knows that they're going to be the people who will lead these people to grow in the Lord. Now, the name of uh, uh, these this people, Hanani, means favored by the Lord. And if you remember, another guy named favored by the Lord is Shadrach. When he's, uh, uh, Shadrach, he was given that name because people saw that they were favored by the Lord. And these are the things na kailangan natin makita ng uh, trait sa mga leaders natin. 1 Corinthians 4, 2. It says here, Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man, man be found faithful. Hindi lang po sa pera ito. Pag nilagay kang leader ng Panginoon, you're a steward of God's people. And, there, and you have to be found faithful. Hindi po sinabi ng Panginoon that a man be found rich, a man be found with many friends, a man be found with a large congregation, what God is requiring of people he put in charge is to be faithful to him. That's it. Be faithful to the truth of the word of God and be faithful to the Lord as well. Now, all of these things can be given by God. Friends, big congregation, and, all, and riches. But it should be given by God. Hindi po persahin ng leader. Kasi po, marami po leaders sa panahon natin who are 
all this selfish whose God is their belly sabi nga ng Bible Second Peter chapter 2 verse 1 to 3 but there were false prophets also among the people even as there shall be false teachers among you who privately shall bring in damnable heresies even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction and many shall follow their per pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of and through covetousness Ito yung kanilang ugali. Shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Meron po mga leaders na abusado at ginagawa lang business ang simbahan. Now, Nehemiah knows this. He set people who are faithful and, fe and fearing the Lord. Verse number 3. And I said unto them, Let not the gates of Jerusalem be opened until the sun be hot. And while they stand by, let them the shut, shut the doors and bar them. And appoint watches of the inhabitants of Jerusalem, every one of his watch, and every one to be over against his house. Now, Nehemiah's instruction was simple. Buksan niyo yung gate pag tirik na yung araw. Malapit na sa tanghali. Wag maaga. At bago pa dumilim, sarado niyo na. Okay, hindi po siya, he's not talking about your wake-up time and sleep time, okay? says here that buksan niyo yung gate pagka gano'n na, kasi para, uh, para safe, okay? Para walang masyadong, uh, hindi, masyadong, hindi palaging bukas yan at walang darating na, uh, hindi tayo mapapasok ng kaaway. Not only Nehemiah set guards among the, uh, among the gates, but Nehemiah commanded people to guard their own houses. Okay, and this is one principle that we can see. Strong churches are, strong, are composed of strong families. And strong families are uh, uh, have fathers who are guarding their own houses. Not only financially, but most uh, especially spiritually. Na meron pong spiritual leaders sa mga pamilya. Nehemiah knows this. Now, fathers, guard your houses. Ingatan nyo mga pamilya nyo. Why? Because we can never grow if we don't have strong families in the church. Nakita mo natin, sa mga, look at how many decent churches today na tinake over ng kanilang anak ang simbahan, emerging church na. Why? Because the pastor may be good pastors, they build a, a large house, but they are failures as a father. Hindi nila nag-guard yung theology na build up sa kanilang mga anak. Hindi nila nag-guard kung ano yung paniniwala ng anak nila at sinet nila as a pastor, binago ang buong simbahan. Meron ng drums, praise and worship na. Diba? Nag-speaking in tongues na. Uh, easy believism na. However good their father was, strong in doctrine, pero they failed to guard their houses. Iba yung naging theology ng kanilang mga anak. Nag-take over ng church, iba na rin ang theology ng simbahan. Kaya nga po mga, mga patid, we need to guard our houses. Siguraduhin po natin na ang ating pamilya ay lalago na may tamang paniniwala sa Panginoon. Of course, the priority is for them to be saved, but as well, guard them Sa, sa kanila pong theology na may build nila sa kanilang, sa kanilang utak. Kasi kahit nagaano tayo ka strong ngayon, generation, kung yung next generation ay weak when it comes to doctrine, para bang sinayang lang din natin yung panahon natin. Kaya nga po, that's the reason why we're doing this. We're producing uh, uh, booklets and all of these studies so that people in the next generation can see that they can have something na, na pwede nilang gamitin para po patuloy sila sa pananampalataya. Okay, not, not only does Nehemiah want them to grow spiritually, but also numerically. Verse number 4 and 5. Now the city was large and great, but the people were few therein, and the houses were not builded. Yeah, laki ng city, konti yung tao. And may God put into mine heart to gather together the nobles and the rulers and the people that they might be reckoned by genealogy. And I found a register of the genealogy of them which came up at the first and found written therein. Now, kailangan silang mag-grow din as a, uh, as, as, as a people. Dapat dumami rin sila. Why? Because there's going to be battles in the future. Kailangan marami sila. Now, Nehemiah was doing this, but before he, he, uh, uh, do, he will do this, he has to know who he has, sino yung mga nandun. That's why he found a registry. And the rest of this chapter are just baby names that you can use uh, pag, uh, pag kayo yung uh, mga nganak na. The rest of this chapter are just people uh, son of this, son of that, son of this. Now, uh, I don't know if I can build a preaching through that. Of course, uh, maybe, probably not. Uh, but that is the rest of the chapter. Now, what is the challenge today, this morning? Is sa pag-aaral po natin, chapter one to six, and he, even here in chapter seven, we think now when there is a big hurdle in front of us, and then we're trying to get over it, and we, we're struggling, we're struggling, we're asking the help of the Lord, and once we eventually got over it magkakaroon po tayo ng feeling of complacency. Feeling natin, eto na yung uh, ultimate victory ko sa buhay. 
Pwede na akong tumigil. Okay na, meron na akong nagawa. But as long as God is keeping us alive, meron ka pang kailangan gawin. And, and you're here today, I don't know what spiritual victories you've had, but it doesn't end there. I don't know how much you know of the, of the Bible, but it doesn't end there. It ends when God tells you to stop. And God will never tell you to stop growing and, as, uh, as long as you're still alive. Kaya nga po, pastor ka man, matanda ka na sa pananampalataya, marami ka na napagtagumpayan, wag mo pa rin pagtiwalaan ang sarili mo. Keep growing, keep growing, keep working in the Lord. This is what Nehemiah did. It is a great thing to build the wall. Many have tried, a lot, all of them have failed, and he built the wall. He's the one who, who finally built the wall, but he realized it's not the end. Simula pa lang to, magre-recover pa lang ang bansa ng Panginoon. Lalapit pa lang kami sa Panginoon. That's why, set up all of these things, let's start growing. And that's what we're going to study the rest of the uh, book of Nehemiah. How did these people grow? Anong ginamit nila? Anong ginawa ng Panginoon kay Nehemiah and Ezra and all of these leaders para lumago ang mga, ang, ang mga tao sa Panginoon, lumapit uli sila sa Panginoon. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for uh, the short time of study. Um, a few verses here in Nehemiah and and even as we saw a few